Now, where are we? Aquarius. A sudden change in financial fortune is close at hand. Hmm. Spend your gains wisely and don't distance yourself from old friends. Lucky numbers 7 and 23. Huh. Ever read your horoscope? I bet even if you think it's a lot of rubbish, there have been occasions when you've sneaked a look. Maybe some of you have even had your palms read or had someone look into your tea leaves to try to tell your fortune. Even in the mind of the most cynical of us, there's that sneaking suspicion that the old ladies that look into crystal balls or the people that gaze into the heavens to see whether Mercury's lining up with Venus or something like that might have something. wonder why that is. Perhaps it's because we're all secretly fascinated about the future. I don't mean knowing whether we're going to win Lotto this week. I mean, what's our life going to be like in, say, 10 or 15 years' time? What sort of world are we going to be living in? Bookshelves are lined with volumes of various people's visions of the future. Scores of movies have been made trying to depict life in, say, the 21st century. On a more mundane level, our politicians and economists spend a lot of time trying to predict what might be just, say, six months away. Sometimes people's visions of the future are pretty spot on. Other times, they're a long way off. In the 1940s, George Orwell tried to predict what life might be like in 1984. 84 rolled around and we laughed because our world really wasn't as he'd imagined it would be. It's got so that if someone was able to predict a range of things that would happen in 10 years time and they all pretty much came to pass, we'd respect that person immensely. We'd listen to them if they made predictions about the next decade. So let's imagine someone in 1880 making a very accurate series of predictions about our day. We'd be highly impressed. We'd be even more impressed if the predictions had been made in, say, Elizabethan times. I want to tell you about a range of things that were predicted between two and three thousand years ago, very accurately foretelling life in our day. And I also want to tell you how you can take advantage of that knowledge. In the Bible, in Matthew 24, the disciples of Jesus asked him, What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? He began by saying, You will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. So, if we're trying to ascertain more precisely the time of the end of the age, we're looking for an era, a generation of wide conflict and threatened conflict. When you mention the word war, many tend to think straight away of the Second World War, and then to breathe a sigh of relief that we haven't had war on that scale for almost 45 years. But that disregards the awesome truth that armed conflicts have taken 21 million lives since World War II. Or that as recently as 1983, 4 million troops were fighting in 75 countries. During 1983, 40 separate major and minor conflicts were identified, and 8 countries had troops fighting on foreign soil. What's more, in the majority of modern conflicts, it's estimated that 3 out of every 5 fatalities are civilians. A United Nations survey puts the average death toll from armed conflict at between 33,000 and 41,000 lives a month since 1945. Figures on military spending are astonishing, currently $2,000 billion a year throughout the world. That's $300 for every man, woman and child on earth, equivalent to more than the average income of many developing countries. One specific example is that the cost of a single new nuclear submarine equals the annual education budget of 23 developing countries with a total of 160 million school-aged children. Wars and rumours of wars. Nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Final all-out nuclear war, such as we know the nations now have the ability to wage against one another, is also very accurately foretold in the Bible. Right from the prophet Joel, who spoke about blood and fire and pillars of smoke in the final conflict. The word pillar he used is a Hebrew word, timoroth, meaning palm tree. Right through to the prophet Zechariah, who spoke of the effects of the plague in the final battle. He said, their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. An accurate prediction of the effects of a thermonuclear blast and the resultant radiation.
not until our generation have we had within our grasp the awful weaponry which seems to be so clearly identified in the pages of scripture. The Bible speaks of the day which shall burn as an oven, of a final conflict in which the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Until we saw the awesome power of nuclear weapons, we found it hard to understand how a war could leave the slain, in the words of the prophet Jeremiah, from one end of the earth to the other, to be neither buried nor lamented, but to be as dung upon the ground. Joel's prophesied palm tree of smoke now looms over the world. The hopes of many lie with the leaders of the superpower nations as they make their cautious moves towards disarmament. Recently it seems they've been making significant strides towards a reduction in the arsenals of the United States and the Soviet Union. But the much heralded handshakes signal only tiny cutbacks. You need to understand the kinds of weapons involved. Missiles fall into three categories. There are the short range weapons with a limit of 300 miles, medium range, they can travel 3,000 miles, and long range, these can travel between continents with enormous destructive power. The only weapons the superpowers have agreed to give up are the medium range missiles, which comprise just 8% of the total warhead stockpile. Current agreements leave untouched the 50,000 or so long range warheads, which could annihilate our world eight times over. And still in place are the so-called doomsday weapons, the missiles based on submarines, which can reach their targets eight minutes after the order to launch. What's more, the Star Wars program goes on unabated. The American plan to destroy Soviet weapons from space will gobble up trillions of dollars between now and the end of the century. The Soviets, having been very outspoken about Star Wars for a number of years, are now understood to be embarking on their own version of a space defense system. Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev have, however, made some truly historic progress in having achieved the first cutback ever in nuclear weapons. But the agreement and any future agreements are going to be fragile. The world in which we live is full of hot spots, places like the Persian Gulf, where the interests of not just local nations but also the superpowers rub up against one another with often deadly results. Within clear sight of each other, the nations of the Warsaw Pact and of NATO still rehearse every day for war in Europe. And these soldiers train in the light of some depressing statistics. Throughout history, there have been 1,600 recorded arms races, and all but four have ended in all-out war. Turning to other prophecies, we're in a time where many of the predictions made about the so-called end times seem to fit current events. The floods which have recently ravaged places like Bangladesh have been more widespread in their devastation than ever before. Such natural disasters have been setting new records. The worst floods, the fiercest storms, the highest death tolls are phrases we've come to hear nightly on our news. Jesus went on in Matthew.